dialing in VR settings to get an optimal match between performance and image quality can be a bit of a headache and take a while to do. Even for high-end cards that are basically set everything to ultra and forget about level and flat screen, those cards still have issues running the same thing in VR, particularly on higher resolution headsets. So, I thought, why not start a new series on the channel of something kind of like what Digital Foundry does, where they'll analyze the image quality of various settings in game, except do that for VR games instead. This will also serve as a benchmark video for the Game of the Hour, Saints and Sinners Chapter 2, Retribution. And don't worry, to avoid any spoilers, basically everything here will be from the first 30 minutes of the game. Full disclaimer, though, um, while this is inspired by Digital Foundry, uh, there are a channel with about a thousand times my sub count and access to far more resources. So, I can't do as in-depth analysis as they can, but there is still a lot to talk about with the latest big release. Particularly because, um, it seems like the PC version is rife with some performance complaints. There should hopefully, still be something that you can get out of this, even if you don't have the same configuration I do, though. And uh, that specifically is a RTX 4090, a 12900K, and running on the Pimax 8KX at roughly 5.1K by 3.1K per eye. And also, do bear in mind, certain things may be more noticeable within the headset. Now, to establish a general baseline and broad differences between each level of graphics, we're going to take a look at the opening scene at each preset for graphics, that being all low, all medium, all high, and then all ultra. The, the one exception to this is going to be texture quality, which is set to ultra for everything, as texture quality has minimal performance impact, except for your VRAM usage. You should always set your textures to the highest you can handle. If you start to experience extreme stutters and frame drops, though, you can try turning down textures, as VRAM is something that's basically good until it's suddenly not. Now, this all said, because I'm heavily refresh rate limited below ultra and do not have a weak GPU available that would bring me well below the FPS cap of my headset, I want to focus instead on the GPU frame timings, as your frame timings dictate FPS and lower is better. Trying to measure the exact difference on certain settings was also difficult for this reason, but several still produced quite a measurable difference. So, that all said, right away there is obviously a plain difference to see, that being the percentage from one saying to the next will also be noted. So that 67.5% you see next to medium is the increase from the low preset, while the 14.5% next to high is the increase from medium, and so on. Do also bear in mind the about 10-15% to performance penalty I have for recording. Anyway. While I am still doing a mostly solid 90 FPS, the performance demand jump from even low to medium preset is astronomical. Almost a 70% increase in average frame times. I will also briefly note that the performance difference between the lowest and highest settings is truly staggering, with 2.7 times greater frame times on ultra versus low. But it should also be quite evident that the performance delta nets you a significantly better visual experience too. But perhaps surprisingly, there's mainly two sayings responsible to this that we'll touch on later. Either way, you can probably notice some major differences between each level of quality as the cutscene plays, with some of these changes being readily obvious, whereas others might be more subtle in the way they enhance the scene until you notice. And that's precisely why we're going to look at each setting to see what they do. The first thing we're going to take a look at, as it was one of the most notable effects to me here, is the effects quality setting. Let's go back and take note of the fire effects. The main thing this changes is the intensity of the fire and the amount there is. The orange glow that you see is mainly controlled by post-processing and not the effects quality setting. However, even going up to medium significantly increases the fire pr present while also emanating a little bit of a fiery orange glow there. This increases at high and ultra, though the effect is less pronounced compared to going from low to medium. But if we look at a later scene where some flames are lit again, there are some more obvious differences present between each tier of graphics. On low, the smoke and shimmer of the flames pops distractingly in and out of existence, 
The same even happens on medium, but less frequently. It's only high where the effect stays around consistently enough to avoid looking like the fire's aura fades in and out. Though there's still a slightly unnatural visual flicker and pulsing of the light if you squint that Ultra appears to mostly fix. For the performance impact, we're briefly going to go back to the main menu. It's easy to see again how much you lose at low settings. There aren't even smoke effects on low, whereas medium at least has them. High and ultra make the effects generally look better, but there's not as massive a change as going from low to medium here. However, this is also reflected in the performance cost as going from low to medium had a near 10% increase from 6.2 to 6.8 milliseconds. I couldn't measure anything notable between medium and high, save for a notable change in the 0.1% lows. And Ultra has a pretty massive increase here from almost 30% for medium on the average FPS. The second thing we are going to look at is post-processing, specifically the major change it has on lighting. On both low and medium, there is virtually zero bloom to speak of on the lights. But on high, you can start to see some very subtle bloom where the lights are coming from that helps add to the intensity and the brightness. But it is Subtle. While Ultra dials up the effect to far more noticeable levels, that creates a scene which looks measurably brighter versus lower settings. This is evident on the fire as well, as if we move ahead to the creature, the candles get a more noticeable aura of heat to them as they float around, in turn with the post-processing setting increasing, which helps add a little extra feeling of intensity to the light. To show another scene which illustrates the change, here is the main menu again, and I'm going to briefly flash between each setting since post-processing is, in my opinion, something that affects the entire scene at each level. Gradually going from low to ultra, here the main difference appears to be things like bloom and the general fog effect created. The image in general gets dimmer on lower settings because of this, to where on ultra there is even a noticeable halo effect around some of the text that some people might consider too aggressive, but I do kind of like the atmosphere of the fog effect adds. Performance from low to ultra is, well, not that significant. About 7.5 milliseconds versus 8.8 .8 milliseconds. However, the visual impact is much more noticeable and has quite visible changes all the way to the ultra, unlike some other settings. While we are here at the menu, we're going to take a look at the next saying, and that is view distance. We're going to use the alleyway in the main menu here for it, as it's a pretty far view with a good amount of detail that represents a decent chunk of the environments in the game. Truthfully, there seems to be quite minimal difference between medium, high, and ultra here. The difference is pretty negligible, save for maybe the most distant objects you can barely see. However, Lowe's is so bad it may as well stop 10 feet in front of you. There is a huge difference simply going from low to medium, even for objects close to you. While certain things, like the railing on the top right over there, they simply disappear on low. However, medium barely increases the demand versus low, while having noticeably lower frame times versus high and ultra which had more or less the same. A 14.5% difference is pretty good for looking so similar to those. Also while here, we can take a quick look at foliage quality, or rather how the saying appears to do absolutely nothing that I can see below Ultra. It seems to only control how much spawns and is the same at every damn setting. <laughs> look at the main menu where the bushes don't change at all no matter what setting we're at. And if we go back through the intro again, we can see there are many areas where foliage spawns out of thin air on Ultra that does not exist on any other setting, not even high. This setting, as far as I can tell, seems pretty useless below Ultra and doesn't do much. I'm not gonna bother with showing the numbers as it was literally all about margin of error difference across every single one. So let's move on. Our second to last setting is my old nemesis, anti-aliasing. Right away, it should be extremely evident that AA is the single most performance black hole of a setting. There was a 70% difference between no AA and high AA. 
And again, I couldn't see too significant of a difference between the high and medium AA. The main difference for this visually are obviously the jaggies. Without any AA, shimmering is very noticeable, even without pixel peeping. Even medium AA does clean this up quite significantly. Although there is still some shimmer present, which only high and ultra, which use the same level of AA, largely take care of. For shadows, we have to transition to another scene to best illustrate the changes. So, shadows. Right away, it should be pretty easy to note the huge performance and visual change between the settings. On low and medium, shadows don't even exist on the walker models. They neither cast shadows themselves or are shadowed. However, the second we tick to high, difference is night and day. The walkers themselves have shadows, maybe even a bit too aggressive shadows, but they also cast shadows on the floor that's beneath them. Ultra, for what I could find, did not appear to have any notable visual upgrade. So really, it seems like either go with medium or, hot or high, and that's what I'm going to show for the next comparison. The difference in the shadows becomes even more prevalent in motion here. It should really speak for itself how much different the walker looks at medium settings without shadows moving over its body as it's trying to bite you. How However, the effect of the shadow setting extends well beyond just the walker itself. If you direct your eyes to the door far behind it, you can see that on the high settings, it does have noticeable shadows, whereas on medium, it is completely flat, lacking any to speak of, just like the walker. The shadows do provide a much better image, yet that comes at a pretty hefty performance cost here. To further illustrate the difference, here's how the flashlight behaves on the walkers at medium and high. On high, the flashlight actually has noticeable effect as it mostly deals with the shadows like you'd expect and lightens them up depending on how much the light is over them. While on medium, the lack of noticeable shadows means it really doesn't look like it's doing much of anything. Now, this naturally begs the question of what settings should you go with then if you don't have a super powerful rig that can just set everything to high graphics, right? Well, given what I've seen, I recommend one of two options. The first kills off the jaggies by using high AA, but you have to sacrifice those shadows because trying to use both is incredibly performance intensive. The second gives you those nice shadows, but unfortunately sacrifices AA and you're going to have to deal with the shimmer and jaggies. We're close to high settings with the presets here, so you may think, why not just set it all to high? Uh, but there is a reason not to do this and choose one or the other. So let's take a look at that intro again, but this time with the optimized settings compared to both medium and ultra. So while the average frame times between the high AA and no shadows may be close to the high preset, in certain scenes there is a pretty massive difference, <laughs> such as the opening here with the old man lecturing us from beyond the grave. The high preset is hovering around 8.5 to 9 milliseconds, while the AA focus preset is largely around 6.5 to 7 milliseconds. That is a near 30% difference in this scene and definitely quite major. But meanwhile, the shadow preset is... Oh boy, that is absurdly lower frame time. That is almost half of the high preset and noticeably below half of the ultra. The frame rate more or less stays like this the entire time and is just ridiculously stable compared to everything else. It can be seen that during most of the rest of the intro, the AA focus preset is pretty close to the frame times of the general high preset outside of that one scene. There does not appear to be a significant difference until we approach more character models again, at which point the high preset does start to get some noticeably higher frame times, which is expected given that the character models do not seem to cast dynamic shadows as they move if you're below high. As I did state before though, do take some numbers with a pinch of salt as I did not have a weaker GPU that would have kept me below the FPS cap in my HMD to further gauge the impact of some settings, like I know Digital Foundry uses lower end GPUs when they do their optimized settings, but I hope this gives a general idea of how some settings affect performance and visuals in Retribution. It does seem like the game has some issues with consistency or optimization though, as I had to redo and re-benchmark scenes many times to ensure consistency. 
since uh, I got a couple results which were too far outside of run-to-run -run variants or simple head movement to account for. But ultimately, these figures are about what I found somewhat consistent on my setup. But it's also kind of weird how some things don't seem to do virtually anything, whereas others provide noticeable effects all the way up to Ultra. If you like this kind of content, uh, do let me know in the comments as it was long, but also fun. If this is what people want, I'd consider doing this for some other VR games and big releases for VR going forward. Leave some suggestions. And uh, if you stick around for more videos, then until next time. And if not, thanks for stopping by. Later.